Hi there, my name is Merlin, like the wizard. This is a project I've been working on for a little while. It's called Mastermine. And it is a fully automated strip mining network in Minecraft using the Computercraft mod and its little robot turtles, end quote. So, uh, real quick, if you don't know, Computercraft is a mod that adds computers into Minecraft. They come with these desktop monitor things, the disk drives, floppy disks, big monitors, uh, wireless modems for wireless communication, and this is all fully programmable in Lua, which is a programming language like any other in that it's turn complete, you can do whatever you want with it basically. Uh, and these are turtles. They're these little robots that can move around, uh, place blocks, dig blocks, sense blocks, basically anything involving blocks. They're, again, fully programmable in Lua, and uh, yeah, so what I wanted to do was I wanted to write a program where all these guys work together and go out and mine for me uh, so that I never have to mine again. I can just sit back and watch the diamonds roll in. So that's what I did, and I'm going to turn it on and just get to explaining it afterwards. So turtles activate. You have to say that, or it won't work. So, they go out in pairs. I'll explain why in a bit, but you can see here they're moving up to these red blocks, and then they're gonna sort of see each other and pair up. Uh, so now if I hop down here, this, they're going down what would be the vertical shaft down to mining depth. And here you can see the first turtles on the scene, the first pair started going, this is east, and the second pair started going west. So what they're doing is they're mining out this central shaft that's going to be the shaft that all the other shafts sort of branch off of. Then the next turtles are digging, this is north and south, and that's, they're digging the first branching shaft. So these are the first of many what will be shafts that branch off of this first one. So their method of mining, I just based off of my normal method of mining and what I think is most people's, which is just this strip mining where you dig a straight uh, shaft that is two blocks tall, one block wide, and you just dig in a straight line until you find ore, mine up the ore until it's gone, then keep mining uh, this shaft in a straight line. So I think that's pretty efficient. Uh, it's certainly a more efficient uh, type of mining than uh, quarrying, for instance. Here you can see this guy's going to see the, the copper, dig it up, and go back. If we look, um, these guys look like they're headed towards some coal. They have an algorithm, of course, for when they find the coal. You can see he's going to look left and look right and they can only see what's in front, above, or below them, so that's why they have to look around all the time. And their algorithm for digging up blocks, for digging up uh, ore, is basically, here, if I grab some ore, I can demonstrate here. I'm just going to plop down some ore. I'm playing God right now. Um, so they see the ore, they add it to a list of all the ore they've already seen. Then they say, what is the closest ore that I've already seen? What's the one that I can get to the fastest? Then go to that ore, mine it, look around, see if there, check if there's any ore around it. And if there is, add it to the list. And if there's not, uh, I guess don't add it to the list. And keep doing that until all the ore is gone. So basically... It uses an A star algorithm for determining the fastest path to each of the ore blocks, uh, and as well as which one's the closest. And it t tends to work pretty well. It's based on the constraints of the area it's already d dug out, so it will never mine through anything to get to anything else. It's always, um, it's always going to like go around walls when it's doing that. So. Uh, yeah, that's what's going on on the ground. If I go up here, this is our control panel. And this, in computer craft, you have the ability to have touch screens. So that's what this is. 
The, each one of these is a little button that I can use to do these functions. This main menu screen, I can actually X out of up here and go to the main screen, which is a map. So this is the, the main area to control all these turtles. If I zoom out here, you can see here they are. Oop, too far. Um, there we go. Here's all these groups of turtles. The twos represent that there are two turtles on that little zoomed out block uh, pixel. And if I click on one of these groups, so this is, you can see this is Turtle 9, we can read all this guy's stats. So that's a little graphic representation, as well as I could art. Uh, this is in state mine right now, toggling between mining and waiting for the other turtle. This is the location, orientation, fuel level. This guy doesn't have any items because he's a chunky turtle, but I'll get to that in a second. If I click this arrow, you can see turtle 13. So this is the other one in the pair. This guy, you can see that's supposed to be a pickaxe because it's a mining turtle. Uh, and this guy has 159 items. These are the guys over here. If we look at them, see I can click this little find button. That is the zoomed in view. So that's if I, you know, I can tab around on this and that kind of just centered on them. You can see the green is the current extent to which they've dug this shaft. The light gray here represents that they've dug the shaft to that point. If I go back over to the center, wait for it, you can see that's that light gray other shaft, the north south one. And if I zoom out, you can see, uh, wait, yeah, just that each one of these dark gray shafts represents something that could be mined or will be in the future. So let me go back to the menu. I'm going to recall these guys by toggling the power here. That's going to cause them to turn around. Normally, if they, they would turn around eventually if they filled up on items or they run out of fuel or I think there's also like a limit of 100 or 200 or something that they can go out to before turning back. Um, you can see they're coming back one level higher than they are mining out on. That's because if a turtle's coming back and a turtle, another turtle's going out in the same area, I don't want them to collide with each other because they'll just kind of sit there doing nothing. But their first stop here on the way back is going to be this chest. And this is going to be where they dump all their items. So, you know, they're mining. you got to have some place to collect all the items. This is it. They dump them all. They dump all except for coal. Coal goes into this chest. And the reason for that is that these guys use coal as their fuel source. So if they were quarrying or doing some other method of mining that isn't as efficient, I think you'd have to have some coal supply for them so that they would stay fueled. But the great thing about this is that they mine efficiently enough that they, they can actually fuel themselves just with the coal that they mine. So they dump into this chest, but they also, before they're leaving, they calculate how much fuel they're going to need based on how far they want to go, how far out they're starting their mine. And before they leave, they grab enough coal and refuel to the point where they'll be able to make it out and back with uh, spare change. So that is the gist of it. I want to now show what will happen if I toggle this back on because where they choose to mine is actually pretty essential to how this whole thing works. So I'm going to recenter and zoom back in. The main computer now is trying to decide what is the closest place that they can mine. They could go back to the ends of where they already started, but that would be a pretty long journey before they get to mine again. So what they're actually going to do is they're going to go eight blocks out it's in the config file. You can have it be four blocks or whatever you want. But I have it set to eight. So they go eight blocks out, and they're starting new shafts now. So that's going to be their method until they've filled out to the point where starting a new shaft, you have to actually travel farther than just continuing a previous shaft. And at that point, they'll continue a previous shaft. So here you can see them going. These guys are a little late to the party. And if we look up here... There you go, you see new new shafts like that. So
The reason they go out in pairs is a little, but not all that complicated. It has to do with chunks, which are how Minecraft stores blocks. If you don't know what a chunk is, it's a 16 by 16 block area. And if a player is standing in a chunk, that chunk will be loaded. And all the chunks sort of around that will be loaded. And what that means is that the game will be calculating all the entities in that chunk. Uh, it'll be if there are any cows or chickens or whatever, it'll be uh, doing all the math for their movement and all that fancy jazz. And what that means for turtles is if they're in a chunk that isn't loaded, so if they're too far away from the player, if I were all the way over here, for instance, they would just shut off. That's how it's coded in the mod, um, which is not ideal because with something like uh, auto miner, you want to be able to go away and have it keep mining, and you also want it want them to be able to mine out thousands of blocks and still function. So instead what I did is I looked for a lot of ways to do this just in the base computer craft mod. I didn't find any. I really tried, um, but I didn't find anything anything that would work. Um, but fortunately, there's another mod, Peripherals Plus One, that adds a bunch of different types of turtles, a bunch of different tools for turtles to use, and one of them is this here, this chunk loader. That's what this little ender pearl box thing is. And all you do, you attach it to a turtle, and it basically basically it makes the turtle act like a player. It loads all the chunks that that turtle is around. So um, turtles can only hold two tools. They need to hold one wireless modem, because otherwise there's no way to talk to the computer or network with any of the other turtles. So one of them has to be a wireless modem. The other one, uh, one turtle needs to be mining, obviously, so they need a pickaxe which means the only way to have a chunk loader is to have another turtle there. So that's why they go out in pairs. One to load the chunks, and one to mine the stuff. And as long as the mining turtle doesn't get too far away from the chunky turtle, which it really couldn't get that far away from it, um, it'll stay loaded, and everybody will be happy. Um, yeah. Also, one benefit of having... Uh, pairs like this. If the first turtle fills up its inventory, so let me, uh, oops, uh, let me just simulate that. So it's filled up its inventory. Wait for it. Wait for it. Continue waiting. He's going to turn around and dump all his items into the second turtle. So instead of having just one inventory space, they actually have two, which is a added benefit. It's a feature, not a bug. So a couple other features. If you're playing on vanilla Minecraft, then you pretty much always want to be mining at, like, depth 12, because that's where you're going to get the most diamonds, and, uh, you know, iron and coal spawn, and basically the same amount there. But if you're someone who plays with mods, not that I know anyone of that sort, but if you do, you might have something like copper or tin, and those don't really spawn so much down there. They more spawn up near level, say, 50. So what I have, for instance, for my survival world, is I have in the config file uh, two levels where, the, where they'll be mining. And the way they basically they choose between levels is when they're about to go out, they roll a die, and you can have it weighted. So what I have is I have it weighted 60% chance they'll go to level 12, and 40% chance they'll go to level uh, level 50. That's just how I have it set up on that other world. But just so you know, that is a feature. Also, we've got this little pocket computer, which is another thing in computer craft, little iPhones that you have. And you can use this to issue user commands to the system, just as if you were inputting them on the, uh, on the computer here. You can also get a little bit of info about the thing. Right now, this is all the info I have it set to, but I could have it set to more pretty easily if I wanted to. Uh, so that's a thing. Uh, another thing that I love is just how much control you have over these turtles. So if I, you can see that M is a little GPS tracker on me now that I have the pocket computer turned on. But anyway, if I zoom out, let me select a turtle, turtle 12, you can totally hijack the crap out of these guys. So let's say I tell them to halt. State is going to change to halt, which means I'm now in control, not the computer. I'm gonna go up a couple times now. Tell them to spin around four times to the right, go forward, left, down, forward, back twice, and right. And basically, I just love that I can 
tell these guys to do whatever I want. You can see this guy playing out the Macarena over here. Um, and there's a bunch of other features you can, uh, or, I mean, functions you can give to these guys. Some of them are slightly more useful than that. If I tell this guy to reset, he's going to hopefully find his way back to the mine. There you go. Sort of being as smart as he can to find his way back. And he's now going to go back to mining, yes. I didn't ruin things, hopefully. Maybe. I might have ruined things. It's possible. But, uh, ow. Yeah, it's usually not too useful to be able to hijack them. It's mostly fun. Occasionally, though, you can um, get them out of jams. Hang on. For instance, right now. Okay, I made him go back. Let's reset. How we doing? I think it's that this guy here is not sure what he's doing. So I'm going to do that. Trip. Wait. Mine. Did it work? It. Wait for it. It did work. Yay. They're still mining. Okay. So occasionally you'll have things where they get stuck. You know, life is messy. And uh, sometimes, you know, I have protections against stuff like gravel, but you never know what's going to happen. And it's much better to be able to get them out of a jam from the control room by, like, moving them around to the D-pad and just guessing and trying to get them out of the jam than it is to have to actually go down and find them when God knows where they are, etc. Uh, so, anyway, that's what this is for. It's also just a lot of fun. Another little added thing is this update feature. So, if I'm changing the code or doing whatever, I actually built in a remote update. So it's kind of like, I don't know if you've seen the show Dollhouse, but it's like a remote wipe. I can send them all their data uh, over RedNet wirelessly, and they'll just uh, re-update, reboot, and actually continue from where they left off. This system is smart enough where I can reboot even the main computer, and it will remember where all the turtles are supposed to be. It won't recall them or anything. Um, it also, you know, because it stores the state of all the mine and all that, and so it's smart enough to just pick up from where it left off. So, yeah, that is Mastermind. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the system. You can see, boom, it is off. These guys are going to come park. Uh, thank you for watching. This took way longer than I thought it was going to. It was way harder. It took, like, 3,000 lines of code, over 30 different program files, and tons of rewrites, and overhauls, and I had to write all the protocols for communication, and all of that stuff. So many parts went into making this happen. I didn't think it was going to be such a big project, but it turned out to be. But, uh, I'm really glad of how it turned out. Uh, it's basically, it's smart enough, you can just leave it running, and it'll mine for you, and barely any glitches. It's it's really, I'm happy with how it came out. In my survival world, I am rich uh, when it comes to ore. So, yeah, thank you for watching. I'm going to go to bed now.